Hello, people. How are you? It's Ann. I'm back. Now, no, my face is not naked. My face has sunscreen, which is super goo. Da, da, da. Pink Sweet sent me a lovely sample of the SPF 50 Super Goop. I don't know if I'm going to buy it again once it's out, but I like the way it works. So it's a little spendy, but it might be worth it. Hmm. Anyway, the other thing I'm trying out is the sample from Ipsy, the Tarte Base Tape Primer. It feels good. It's a little runny coming out of the tube, but it feels good. Feels good so far. And I used one of my standard foundations, the Rimmel 25 Hour. It feels okay. I haven't powdered it or anything, but it feels okay. We will see how it feels in just a little bit to see if it's going to work well with the base tape. Now, I have had a request from Deb Knobloch to do a smoky eye. And I'm getting my shield destuckified so it doesn't like glom on too bad now I've got really hooded eyes I don't know how much longer I'm actually going to have before these droopy bits become so droopy that I have to have a little bit of nip and tuck to keep them from obscuring my vision. <laughs> yeah, one of the uh, hazards here. It's like, yeah. Hooded eyes can be a minor issue, or they can be a major issue. Usually it's a major issue once you get onto the older side and the hood gets deeper because your skin loosens up and all that lovely stuff. So much fun. Anyway, I've got my Ruby Kiss Eye Primer. Yes, I've got a little foundation and a little bit of the Super Goop on my eyelids too. I know there's a lot of things that say keep stuff away from your eyelids and I'm going, look, my eyelids need as much help as they can get. They're old. They're crepey. The skin is loose. Between losing a considerable amount of weight and the fact that I'm 60 and headed for 61 later this year, yeah, you, you end up with a lot of loose skin around your eyes. Now, one of the things that I have taken to doing, too, especially if I'm trying to do a smoky look, is I run that eye primer right on up under the lower lashes. Which is not that easy to do once you've got the eye shields on, but hey, my face, my problem. Now, one of the biggest issues with trying to do any kind of eyeshadow when you've gone from just a little bit hooded to, hey, Grandma, can you see me at all, is trying 
to find shapes that will work with you in dealing with all of the hooded creepy stuff. Now one of the things that I do is a tip that I got from well, a technique that I got from Wayne Goss and it works really really nicely doing not just smoky but colorful in hooded eyes and I love it because I got tired of being told that hooded eyes needs browns and just mattes and I'm going screw that and Mr. Goss showed a technique on one of his films if I remember to put it on there I may go look for it and stick it into the description but go watch Wayne Goss anyway he's just good G-O-S-S -S, Goss he's an incredible makeup artist and I love his stuff anyway trying to do hooded eyes with color trying to do a smoky hooded eye trying to to remind yourself that you are not restricted from using colors and shimmers and that kind of thing because you're not it's not set in stone that a hooded eye is not supposed to use this stuff anyway I'm using my Profusion Glitter and Glam eyeshadow palette. Lots and lots of pretty things. Ace. Pretty. Pretty, pretty. And I'm going to remind you that I've got my mirror right down here just below the line of the camera. But that means I'm going to be ducking and bobbing and weaving. I think I finally got the mirror in a good spot for being able to use it without me disappearing completely like I did in some of the early videos. What am I saying early in some of the videos, period? Now, another thing, because I've got hooded eyes, I tend to use smaller brushes on a lot of things, where some people would use a big, wide, fluffy brush. If I do that, see, it takes up the whole eye. I need smaller brushes. I have this one and a few others that are fluffy because they came in sets. I tend to use those just to kind of dust off fallout. Now, if I'm doing something where I'm going to use a base color to set down the primer, I'll use one of the fluffy brushes and just go woof woof because it's like two strokes and I'm done. But I don't know that I'm going to do that today. So I'm going to start with one of my regular elf crease brushes, which is a little bigger than a tiny crease brush but a lot smaller than that big fluffy brush. And I am going, now I'm going to do smoky. I'm going to, I'm going to do smoky, but there's going to be some colors in here, not just the smoke. And that's just because I'm picky.
Yes, I lift my eyebrows up when I'm doing this so I can see what I'm doing. The main thing is making sure that I've got this color high enough that when I do this, I can still see the color here because the rest of it just went in. It got folded under. Now, if you have this Profusion palette, this color is called Mimosa, and it's, yeah, it's kind of a dusty orange. Also remember, if you've got hooded eyes, you're going to have a lot less space between your eyebrow and your created crease. So you want to be kind of careful how high up you go so that you've still got that little bit of flesh showing up here under the eye. No, I didn't do my eyebrows yet. But you want to have that little bit of flesh showing unless you're trying to do something to make you look like the 60s where the blue went all the way up you know if you want to or even worse some of the earlier stuff you know if you want to look like endora from the original bewitched or if you want to look like lucille ball go for it but make it a choice <laughs> okay let's see what color am i going to next Ah, take a little bit of Starburst. Now, this is kind of a, a dusty brick red. And I'm putting that into the actual physical crease and then taking it up just a bit so that it does get involved with that orange. No, this is not going to be bright colors after all. I'm trying to do something that's going to look good being kind of smoky. So this is kind of more a bit of a sunset color without getting too flashy in the brights. And the smoke color for the deepest color is going to be in browns. It doesn't have to be gray. It doesn't have to be black. It's the technique, not the color. I rather like this color. I rather like how this is going so far. Okay, now I'm going to get a slightly more tapered brush just because. And I'm going to set it right here where I can find it. I'm going to get a clean brush that's a little bit wider so I can do the main part of my lid. Here, brushy, brushy. All right, there you go. See? Basic flat brush. OK, 
Okay, this is a little bit of a shimmer. Let me see if it how it does first just by itself. Actually, that looks nice like that. I like it. it goes real nice with that brick red. And it's not so shimmery that it takes over. Let me pick up some more of that brick red and put that back in just because. Don't want to lose it completely. Now, yeah, I could intensify that shimmer by either wetting it or putting some glitter glue down, but I'm more going for the tone than the glitz. Now, here's the other problem you have with glittered eyes. Your glitter will transfer. If you, it, it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but up here in this area, because of the way my eyes fold, I now have a small line of glitter. It's how it works. Don't freak out. Just be ready for it. Now, the color I've got on the lid is called Burnout. Yes, I'm making my concentration face again. I'm putting just a tiny bit of drag on the brush to foil this a little bit. But I am not going ham on trying to get glitter in this color. It just, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Now here's another problem with crepey eyes. And that's trying to fill in the wrinkly spots. Because pulling across the eyelid with the brush, even in a gentle manner, you get wrinkles that pile up. And then you have all these white tiger stripes in those spaces that just, they're not attractive. Do the same thing here. Put a little more of that brick red right there. Let's see. What am I going to do next? I believe. I believe. I'm going to take a little bit more of that mimosa. And yes, I'm starting under the eye already. Because I want to put that mimosa right there. I am not going to do the fine inner corner stuff yet. But I'm going to put the mimosa right there. And then I'm going to take the burnout and do a little bit right here going in. just to kind of lay the start down. Now, 
because then I'm going to take another brush. Now this one's a little bit fatter, mainly because I'm going to be using it to blow out the last color to go under the eye and into the outer corner. And I am using a color that is called Bark. Yes, they have this nice dark black called Nightlife. I'm not into it right now. Pat that Bark into the corner and then go up just a little bit into that original orange so that we start getting a corner here. See, it doesn't have to be dark, dark to make the shape and get that smoky, hazy look. You're looking for technique, you're looking for the shape, and you're looking for kind of just a smoky, hazy look that doesn't necessarily have to be solid black. If I was going out to a club or out for a fancy dinner, Guarantee you, I would have some silver shadow and some glitter and rock the black. It's not what I'm doing today. Matter of fact, I'm probably not doing much other than hanging around and like finishing up my classwork. This is the last week of class for a little while. Then I have a whole week break. A whole week. And then I'm going to go right under where I laid down those other colors, and I'm going to go part way across. Just part way. I'm not going to go all the way up into that inner corner. You should still be able to see the burnout and the mimosa. Yes, I'm having a little trouble with watery eye because it's spring. So this corner is not going to stick perfectly. It's spring. Okay, I'm trying to get approximately even. What do you think? Approximately even. And then I'm going to take the eye shields off. Now, I stuck these eye shields to my arms several times until the back was not terribly sticky anymore. It helps. And don't take off the big piece at the bottom. If you take off the big piece of, uh, at the bottom, it'll be stuck all the way down here. And let me tell you, if you'd already put all of the rest of your face on before doing that, it'll peel your blush right the heck off. All right, that's where we are so far. Now, I'm going to shut off the camera and I'm going to finish my face and I will come back and finish the eyes. But See, you've got your smoke out, 
And this does not look bad on a hooded eye. That's the idea. It doesn't have to be awful. When I get back, we will talk about things like eyeliner and mascara and that kind of stuff. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I've got on my blush, my bronzer, put my eyebrows on. I use the little e.l.f. compact that's got the got the pomade and the powder just because every so often I like to it's nice stuff I still have it used a felt tip eyeliner which is why it's a little bit messy I'm having shaky hands kind of day did my waterline with the elf gel pencil in brown I'd have done the eyelashes in brown if I had brown mascara. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe L'Oreal has now gotten into the colorful mascara game, at least for the summer. We shall see. But <clears throat> I saw an ad for that on Instagram or something the other day. Anyhow, I'm going to pick up this little pointy brush and finish my inner corner and my brow highlight and then I'm going to do my cheek highlight and pull a lippy. I've got my wet n wild Golden Flower Crown Highlighter. Took a bit of that bling right there. It's not a blinding bling, but I don't need a blinding bling right now. It's the middle of the dang day where I am. Now, I would not take this off to go to the grocery store because it's subtle enough to not make it look like I escaped from a club scene on the way to the grocery store. <laughs> Little bling. Right under the brow just a little bling just like that still leaving me just a tiny bit of space between the rest of the color and the brow highlight it's more a illusion of space because there's really not but just a little bit of fine space there. It's almost sitting on the other color but it's just enough. Do Now me, I don't much care what time of day it is. I like to glow. I figure I'm old enough and earned the points enough that if I'm going to glow, I'm going to glow. There are some advantages to being this age. And one of the advantages is can't nobody tell you nothing because you paid dues. Paid those dues. A little bit on the schnoz. A little bit on the target zone. 
My husband hates that. He said, I remember where they are. You don't have to be picky about it. Now, let's see. Lip stick. Stick the lip. I think I'm going with this one since I've got so much brown going on. This is one of my Clean Color Femme Lipsticks in Burnt Sugar. Now, I don't have a lot of lip liners. I don't use them regularly. I just don't. I didn't meet lip liners until I, I got started doing theater. And dance. And then, take the headband off. I will probably regret that since I haven't sprayed anything yet. This is my Wet n Wild Rose 3-in-1 Primer Water Prep Set Refresh. Oh, I love the smell of that. I love roses. Dollar Tree, guys. Dollar Tree. And these things will kick up a breeze. I'm going to go back and get several more colors. Collect them all! Brush through it for a second. And then let me explain to you why I keep my hair this way. It is now technically styled. <laughs> Ready to rock. Ready to go out and play. That's a hooded eye, smoky look. I hope you enjoyed it. Do yourselves a favor and go check out Deb's channel. She's got some beautiful looks. And she's a bit younger, so... <clears throat> she may have some ideas that I don't. She does more clothing hauls than I do, too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you like what you see. If you're new to the channel, hi, hello, how are you? Please stick around. We have fun here. Subscribe if you want. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling generous. Remember... I'm on a budget. I don't have bail money. Be good.